Sorry. There we go. We're being recorded now. Good morning to the Friday show. We have Amy and Ryan with us. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Hey, how are y'all? Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, Mr. Handsome Atlas. You guys will be sharing today with us the power of a dog and updating us as well. Because the last time we saw you, I was crashing your gingerbread party <laughs> via Zoom. You guys were, we were all COVID lockdown, right? And so you guys are having yeah. a gingerbread party and you were Zooming with family. And then yes. what happened? Well, that was completely unbeknownst to us that this, this whole thing was happening. Uh, our, our cousin Katie helped, uh, you know, coordinate it with you, and they set up a, a gingerbread making contest amongst all the, the young kids in the family. And it was all just kind of a, a facade to to have you jump on and surprise us with the gift of Atlas that day. And so it was uh, definitely a pretty emotional day um, when when you joined our Zoom meeting and, and Amy started crying. I was like, Oh no, what did I just do wrong? <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, and then I it took me a minute to realize what was going on. But Amy, Amy follows you and, and loves, you know, watching your social media presence. So she knew exactly where you were the second you jumped, jumped on the screen. But it was, it was definitely a very uh, emotional and, and, you know, powerful day for us and our family. Yeah, Amy, explain to me, because the minute you saw me come on your Zoom call... <laughs> There were tears almost instantly. Can you explain what you were, were feeling? I'm um, just overwhelmed. Uh, I get teary eyed now. He's been life changing. It has, he has been life changing. Yeah. So we'll back up a minute and we'll um, share. Katie, um, she's the aunt of yes. these special girls, your sister. Um, she, she's actually, uh, she married one of my cousins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have kids the same, same age, age that are that are <laughs> running buddies. And so she's very close, you know, to our family. Yeah. So she submitted the video. She submitted a video to our Healing Hearts nonprofit explaining how you have two twin girls, um, both autistic and both nonverbal. And she had seen um, you guys had kind of seen some benefit being around other dogs with your girls. Yes. Yeah, we were over at her house just playing one day and, you know, uh, Riley was having a meltdown and, and that's fine. And um, we were trying to work through it with her and Riley just um, flopped on the floor and was working through her meltdown. And Katie's dog at the time just went and laid next to Riley and almost instantly Riley calmed down and it was amazing. Um, both Ryan and I just kind of looked at each other. Yeah from across the room, like, wow, that's amazing. And so later on, we look, Ryan and I looked into the possibility of purchasing a service dog and we quickly realized it was out of our budget. And so, uh, but we, we immediately saw that day that what a dog could possibly do for our family and for our girls. Can you explain what life is like for those that don't know? I mean, I, I think it's becoming, we, we all know somebody or we are that somebody that has a child that's, um, they cannot communicate. They cannot process things correctly. Can you explain? Because we, we, I think we take for granted um, going and grocery shopping. Simple, simple life tasks we take yeah. for granted. Can you explain to me what your life has been like uh, with two nonverbal autistic twin girls? Yeah, and so, like you said, more people nowadays are, are familiar with autism spectrum disorder, and, and it's, there's such a vast range of what being autistic includes these days. And so, uh, with our twin daughters, we realized that at an early age that they were not progressing with their ver verbal communication. And so, we went to a specialist to see, is there something we should be looking into? Do we need a speech therapist? And, and that's when they were placed on the autism spectrum. And so getting that early diagnosis at age two has helped us be able to help, you know, get therapy for them. But really what we, what we had been struggling with is the nonverbal communication means that uh, a child not able to tell us what their wants and needs are, you know, when, when they're hurting, when they're sick, when they're upset, they don't have the means to tell us, I, I don't feel good. I hurt, or I want this. I, I, you know, I need this for comfort or even as something as small as I'm, I'm hungry. I want a snack. Yeah. 
they're, they're unable to actually communicate those things to us. And so it quickly leads to them becoming upset and them having a breakdown and a meltdown and, and you know, throwing, you know, kind of what you, what we call fits, um, you, you know, from the outside looking in, they just look like tantrums, you know? And so the, the problem is, is as they got older, the fits became more aggressive. They, they would actually have some situations in which bodily harm would come into play. And so we would have to quickly, you know, get in there and try to de-escalate the situation. But once again, with a kid that can't communicate what their needs are, we're, we're doing a guessing game. We, we try playing off of verbal, you know, physical cues to, you know, <laughs> do you want juice? Do you want, you know, <laughs> do you want snack? You know, this, that, you know, we throw as many things at them as quickly as we can just to try to de-escalate the situation. Um, and as and, a parent, I feel like we were always on. You always had to stay 10 steps ahead of them. Like, trying to anticipate how they would react to a situation. I mean, just the simple act of walking around the block, we couldn't do that because one would want, want to go one way, one would go the other way, and they ended up being runners. So we have three kids and two of them went two separate directions. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, and, and all of our neighbors probably think I'm crazy because literally we'd be on a walk and a kid would dart off a direction. So I'm having to tuck the other two kids under my arm like footballs and spread down the street with, you know, three screaming kids trying to get the one that couldn't communicate why they no longer wanted to move in a certain direction. And so a lot of, a lot of those situations, you know, you know, from the outside looking in just looks like, you know, crazy dad running down the street with footballs, you know, and it was one of those things where when we saw Katie's dog instinctive, a dog with no training, I mean, it's a golden retriever, but it just, uh, you know, a dog using its natural instincts of here's a kid who's upset. I'm just going to go get close to it. And laid down next to Riley and Riley almost instantly had this sense of calm come over her. She didn't understand what this dog was doing either, but the two of them sat there next to each other and immediately had this calming influence. And so, like Amy said, that's when we started looking into it. And actually, that's when Katie went online and found you. Yeah. And, and, you know, found your, uh, your, your social media presence. And then immediately he starts sending us videos <laughs> of, look at these dogs, look how amazing, look how amazing, look how amazing. You know, and then a, a year, I mean, Riley would have been probably about three at the time when that, when that incident first happened. But um, like I said, that's how Amy knew exactly who you were when you jumped on our gingerbread calls, because from that moment on, we started looking into it. You know, like we had never really thought about having a dog. Um, it, it was just at until first, that it just moment. Like one more thing. Until yeah. that moment, until yeah. the power of a dog. Yeah, yeah exactly. right before your eyes you and you saw it firsthand first yeah. yeah can you explain real quick what it's like what it's been like for you guys because you have two girls that look completely normal right mm -hmm. what, what has it been like for you i think there's a lot of judgment um when you're out in public you have these girls throwing fits people love to judge your kids are ill-behaved can you explain some of that, what that's been like to have two children with essentially a, a hidden disability? Um, they look completely normal and healthy from the outside. What has that been like for you guys? I mean, I think you, <laughs> he laughs because there's been a lot of, on my behalf, that I have to bite my tongue. The mama bear instinct yeah. comes out, you know, when, yeah. when you see someone judging Making comments and com even commenting there you know there's a lot of people with no filter in this world and they will say something before thinking yeah and you know you kind of have a, like a, a we always joke about fight or flight kicks into play and it's either we're gonna you know walk away from a situation or you're gonna regret having said that about my child and so i'm i'm very very often kind of pinching amy <laughs> like nope 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 walk away walk, walk away, away. They don't know, they don't understand until you've walked a mile in that, in that shoes, you know, it, it, and it's actually opened up our eyes to yes. misconceived, pre, preconceived, you know, misconceptions that we had, you know, in, in to have more grace yeah. with, with people and what their situation could be. Cause you really don't know somebody's battles, no. you know, they no. could look like they have it all put together on the outside but you don't know how hard they're working to, to put together that, um, that, that facade. And so 
it, it's it was a daily struggle. I mean, it still, it still is. is. It still but, is daily struggles. Like we still get the looks and the comments and everything. Just you know, trying to go to Target, trying to go to Costco, and you know, those are big adventures for our stopped, family. We stopped doing. It, in yeah. all honesty, it was it was so hard, and it was so hard on the kids, and we we just couldn't do it anymore. And I think a couple of the pictures we've sent you were us actually just going to the grocery store because something that seems like such a simple chore was impossible for our family. Mm -hmm. And and now it has it has become a possibility to, you know, to if go. we need to run errands as a family on a Saturday, we can actually do that now instead of one of us having to stay home with all three kids while the other one runs to go do all the shopping. It's yeah. become possible now to just get them out in public again. And so that's, it's a huge blessing. We're going to talk about that. I have a little, a little video, a minute long of um, Atlas from the beginning and then sliding into your pictures for everybody. So let's see where it started here at 40 Kennels. Everybody watch for Orange Collar Male. His litter name was Lieutenant Dan from our Run Forest Run Litter. Let's take a look at this special boy and then we'll talk about what he has done for your family. just a little a little look of little lieutenant dan becoming atlas and then working for you so now let's talk about atlas atlas was specifically chosen for this role so it did take us some time to wait for the right puppy we, we have to look for something very specific in um a puppy to to work to this level for two non-verbal really unpredictable humans that yes. one minute could be loving and affectionate affectionate and the next minute having a breakdown and for a dog not to feel distrust from from their humans in that way and so our puppy evaluations really do help us target those dogs that have a super, not just high touch tolerance, but love it. Even if it's like inappropriate touch, like you're hitting me one minute, laying on me the next, giving me nice loving pets, you know, later that day. I love it all. Like just bring it all on, you know, that's the kind of puppy we need. Plus someone with really bomb proof personality, low sight, mm -hmm. sensitivity, high confidence, high nerve strength, able to manage. So tell me now, what has Atlas done for you, your family, your girls? I mean, it's he, everything. I mean, he's kind of a complete package, like you said. And it's, it's sweet to see his relationship with each girl individually. Riley and him have a real sweet bond. She likes to bop him on his, or boop him on his nose. And then they will run back and forth. And, but he knows that something's wrong with Riley. Like he knows her cries. He will run in her room if like he hears a certain cry and he'll stick his little head between her bed slats and just lay his head right next to her. Or like she's had a couple of doctors, hospital visits and he is right there with her the entire way. And I think that's huge for us because Riley would have intense meltdowns, not knowing because she didn't understand where she was going. So he provides that constant calm factor for Riley these days. And I feel like with Avery, they, they have a completely different relationship. Uh, she she kind of likes to be the boss of him, but when she has her meltdowns, 
he knows that I either lay next to her or I tuck up under her legs and kind of apply pressure to the back of her legs or bottom and she lets them and she calms down almost instantly as compared to before. I mean, her, her meltdowns could last 20, 30 min minutes. Yeah. It, with, with Avery, she'd be so demonstrative in her meltdowns that you just have to get out of her way. Um, somebody was going to get hit or in, in the oh, she end, it, she would hurt herself. You'd almost have to just give her her space and let her work through it. The problem is, is she'd forget why she was upset in the first place and not be able to recover. And so it's really interesting because when Jamie and Brad Norton from Norton Dog Training came down um, from the Vegas area down to Dallas, where we are, and, and showed us some of the training they've done with Atlas and how we can incorporate it with our girls, they showed us a command that we could use that Atlas will go to the child throwing a fit. The, code, the command was blue and, you know, Atlas would go to the child. Well, real quick, what we realized is their, their fits were so active, so, you know, violent that even Atlas would kind of look at them and say, do I really want to go do that? <laughs> so it, away. He, he would, he would, Not preservation, know. right? Yeah, it would kick in, but he would get right up next to them just so that they knew he was there. And what would be a half hour fit would turn into a 30 second fit. He wasn't necessarily applying the deep pressure as a part of the therapy that does calm the child down, but just his presence alone yeah. would diminish the length of time a fit was occurring. And Similar to that picture that you showed with Avery laying face yes. down, mm -hmm. he was just next to her. And it's right. kind of like, yeah, he had to kind of, they both had to build that relationship. And so since then, he's gotten closer and closer and closer. And so they had to understand that they were there for each other and that he was there for them. This is a good point I want to bring up from, for breeders and for trainers and for other families. When, um, cause a lot of people say, well, why would you place a dog that could get hit? Right. I mean, because that's the reality and, and we don't, we don't, we will never place a puppy, um, with a child that's incredibly violent, but when we have the support and we have the training like NDT did for deep pressure therapy, sometimes that training can look a little different. We're, we're not deploying the dog to go get hit or the, mm -hmm. we're deploying the dog to be right there safely and giving the dog respect and trusting the dog that when they can and uh, that they will apply deep pressure therapy if that will work right so sometimes it's not even every every child's different like you said every child on the spectrum is different and every child needs something a little different and even for both of your girls he's learning and fine-tuning different relationships with both so i just want to make that um disclaimer now for a yes to watch and so many trainers that watch we would never ever place the dog and nor should anybody i mean I, I feel for those families but we would never place a dog in a home where um they're gonna un unwillingly in, in their role of trying to help get hurt um the systems were set in place and um and, and we're so thankful that it's helping de-escalate the fits as well. So he does deep pressure therapy or at least close by, right? Mm -hmm. He was also trained for tethering. And this is really important now because you talked about fleeing. And for those of you that have autistic children or are sharing this video, the same is with Down syndrome children. They'll take off, they're runners, right? Like they have no sense of fear or to stay close to mom and dad. And that's incredibly terrifying and scary as you've said before you're like trying to grab other kids and run and um but then being nonverbal, like this is incredibly dangerous and so atlas was trained he can be with a vest not a collar so yeah. mm -hmm. traders and breeders out there we're not tethering with the collar we're, we're tethering with a nice safe best made for pulling um yeah. and the minute your girls will pull on him he's been trained to just boop dead yeah. weight lay yeah. down go ahead and drag me good luck yeah you. and a avery was so mad the first time she wanted to run a certain direction and atlas sat down she with both hands onto the tether she was <laughs> leaning and pulling and atlas had run. such a sweet disposition he just sat there he just looked at us and right. looked at her and he was like nope i know what i'm supposed to i'm sitting and 30 seconds later we resumed our walk yeah Previously, that would turn into me tucking the child into a football and walking home with screaming kids because they couldn't understand what was going on. And so, yeah, we, we go on walks all the time as a family now. And, and the, the, the biggest 
the biggest concern we have now is we would never tether both kids to Atlas. We, you know, only one at a time. And now they the fight kid, over the it. kids want to be tethered yeah. to Atlas. And so we, we've actually worked on one child being tethered and then Riley loves to hold the handle on the back of his vest. And so okay. Avery will be tethered and Riley's holding the handle and we can all walk together in a line. And once again, as soon as Atlas feels that tug away from you know, Amy will most, we most of the time have the leash. As soon as the kids tug, he stops. If they tug a second time, he sits. Yeah. And we, we hang out for a few seconds until everybody kind of regains their composure and then we can continue to walk. And the important thing was there too, I'm glad you said that so I can just make a note. Amy or Ryan have Atlas on yeah. his mm -hmm. collar on a leash. And then his training apparatus, so to speak, is his vest that's right. tethered to one of the girls or his his vest has a, a handle on it that yeah. was shown in the video. So uh, it's we're not just sending this dog out to be drug around. We're not just sending these girls out with the dog that may actually take off with them. Like every, all the systems have been set in place through training, um, not only training the dog, but then training you guys to know how to manage Atlas. Tell me now, what has this done for your family? It's just, once again, it's opened up opportunities that we, we couldn't have done previously. We didn't even consider taking the entire family to a grocery store previously. And in this time, I mean, they can take for granted, you know? I mean, it seems so easy just to pack the family up and go somewhere. Um, it, it was so hard on us mentally knowing, the, and this sounds terrible, that the beat down a public outing could become. You know, and it was always show up somewhere late, leave early because our kids didn't have the ability to be there for an extended amount of time because there's very short windows of time in which they, they can remain calm and, and keep a focus without getting upset. And, and now it's as simple as we, we have Atlas next tool. And it sounds so simplistic, but with, with all the amazing training that was done for Atlas, he craves attention he wants to be next to these kids you know and, and his disposition is so amazing you saw in the photos half the time the kids are using him as a footrest <laughs> but he's so happy he wants to be right there next to him so we can go to a family birthday party a family gathering That's and when our right. kids get upset Atlas just comes and sits next to him and they lay on him and just give them a few minutes to recover and recoup and then they're right back at it so it just opportunities that we never would have even considered putting our family into are now available to us. Yeah. And giving a voice to Atlas is so important for all of our puppies that they're given a voice in the matter. I, I say they applied for the job, which he did. He literally told us what he wanted, how he would thrive. And it's up to breeders to make sure that that match is correct because then beautiful, powerful things can happen. I'm going to touch on a topic and I'm going to get a little personal here. I know the divorce rate is really high with um, children for special needs because it just tears apart a family. And part of my goal truly um, in placing Atlas was to give some relief to my warrior parents like both of you. Has he done that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like Ryan laughs, but like I can sit down at night and Atlas just knows like, okay, let me go sit on mom for a little bit. Like, and I've caught Ryan just holding Atlas and they have their, their guy moment or Ryan and Atlas will go outside and have a guy evening. And it's, it's awesome. And it's given Ryan and I, he's, he's actually worked for Ryan and I too, just coming and sitting on us and, and applying that pressure therapy. And it's like, okay, I needed that. I needed that for about five minutes and, and I can keep going now. And he has, he's given us a sense of relief in a way um, where, it, I mean, it, it's kind of lightened the load, essentially having him here. I mean, just to, to know that he's working for us and that he loves the girls and he's checking on the girls. I mean, there's times at night that he can be dead asleep in the kitchen and Ryan and I go check on the girls and he beats us to the room. He wants to check on the girls at night before we go to bed. And he does, he runs over there, looks in one bed, runs and looks in the other bed. And then he just lays down in between them. So it's, it's knowing that he's working for us and that he loves us and he has really lightened our load as a family. 
Good. I'm so glad. The day, the day to day stresses that Amy has to go through fighting insurance, you know, dealing with the miscellaneous therapist that we, that we have the kids seeing. Um, I, I think I use the go blue command more <laughs> frequently to have Atlas and Amy's laugh than the kids <laughs> because it, it really does provide that momentary calm. And I, I dare anybody to have one of these dogs sit in your lap and not, not be smile. Upset, you know, yeah. like not, not just sit there and think the world is great, you know, and, and it's, um, yeah, we, we joke about it, how, how much we use the dog for <laughs> therapy and, you know, therapeutic purposes as well. And, and once again, Atlas is, is up for it. He, he wants snuggles. He wants to help. He wants to just be constantly loved on and love us. And so it's, you know, he, he's been an amazing blessing for our family. And you have a third child. Yes, yeah. Emma. She's 18 months older than the twins. Okay. And how has Atlas been for her? Oh, she loves it. She, uh, it, you know, at times he listens to her best out of all of us and, and she <laughs> loves it. She will take him on walks. She'll do the commands, help with his training. And um, I think she likes when she has her quiet time that he'll come up and lay on her or on her blanket next to her. They have a, a really sweet bond as well. We, we told her when Atlas first got here, you know, she knew Atlas was coming to help the twins. So she kind of came to us teary eyed and saying, you know, why did they get a dog? And we said, well, you know, here's the thing. Atlas has to listen to mommy and daddy. He has to work with Avery and Riley, but he needs a best friend. And she lit up. And so she's taken on the role of, of Atlas's best friend. And so she absolutely loves it. But, you know, the tear filled eyes, like, why did they get a yeah. dog? You know, it was, it was kind of, it was cute, but, uh, yeah, so she she absolutely adores the dog as well. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about Atlas? If you could pick one thing, one thing to capture your feelings. Oh, there's more there's too many. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's so many. I mean, it's it's fun to watch him have the zoomies and the girls just laugh and they're jumping on chairs. He tries to get in the bounce house with the girls. It's, it's, I mean, there's a lot, you know, just the way that he lays next to them and he falls asleep snoring next to them. I mean, there's so many. And just in the short amount of time that we've had him. Apparently his snoring is cute, but mine isn't, so. <laughs> right. No, uh, that, mine's, anytime we walk through the door, he is right there to yeah. greet us. He he is so excited to see you every single time. You He's know, and, to pick up the girls. Yeah, when he goes to pick the girls up with us from their therapy appointments, they are so excited. And they come running up to hug him, and just seeing that 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 joy mm -hmm. and, and the joy in the dog and mutual, the dog, yeah, so the mutual joy is is unbelievable. Okay, spill the beans. What's his naughtiest habit? Mm. Oh, I wouldn't say not well <laughs> we have two cats that pre you know predated Atlas in the house and so their relationship isn't always the best he he'll try sneaking in to eat cat poop from time to time um but he's actually scared like one of the the older cat that we have is about 15 years old and he asserted dominance immediately and so if Tinker, our cat, is sitting in the doorway. <laughs> Atlas will patiently wait until he moves to walk into that room. Yeah, he won't go past the cat. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny that you have this, this amazing dog who can put up with these, you know, unruly kids, but the cat, they'll just look at the cat from <laughs> afar and be like, I'm not going anywhere near that thing. Hey, look, we all know those kind of cats, and I would wait till that cat left the doorway. <laughs> yes. Let's be real. He's just smart. Yes. He's just smart. Yeah. <laughs> but it cracks us up that, you know, yeah, he gives the real the boss in the house. We know the real <laughs> boss in the house now. Man. Yes, exactly. He's the boss. That's right. Well, thank you guys so much. I, you know, and for Katie for sharing the story yes. and for you guys finding me. I, I um, I'm truly honored and loved your family from the minute I saw the video and wanted to help not just the two girls, but both of you and your third daughter. And it sounds like Atlas is really, um, he's been in your home for just three months? Three, three months. months. Mm -hmm. Just three months. And yeah. it's accomplishing. It's, it's, it's truly crazy. incredible. The power yeah. of a dog. Once again, um, you saw it briefly with Katie's dog and then Atlas. Hey, buddy. Puppy. He was asleep. He's like, ah, I'm working. 
Oh my gosh. Anything else you guys want to add? Just thank you. Yeah. Thank you for what oh, you do. Anything for other parents that have um, autistic children, what would you say to them if they're thinking like, oh my gosh, should I get a dog? Should I not? Absolutely. What would Absolutely. you say to them? I mean, it, it's just, it can be life-changing. I mean, instantly, mm -hmm. instant life-changing. It can not only help the kids, help the parents, just change the, the, the mood of the house as well. I mean, it, is, it, it, it is taking on another responsibility though. So parents do need to know, you know, it's, it's kind of like another child. There's grooming appointments, vet appointments, his needs and concerns. Um, you feel that that totally outweighs the good though. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he's probably the best well-behaved one in the house. <laughs> so he's the easiest one. Thanks to the Norton training. Yeah. I mean, he listens to us better than our own kids do. So that's actually been the easiest part of having him. Yeah. So I would 100% say yes. It, it helps immensely. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your story. We'll, pro we'll probably check in with you guys in another six months to a year and of course. see where we are at. I am just so incredibly thankful it's, it, it's helping your girls and, and helping your family as a whole. Um, he was born and bred to serve and I'm just so thrilled to see that. Thank you, Norton Dog Training for uh, your training for our Healing Hearts program and for everybody that has supported us, that has sponsored, that has donated. We cannot do this without funding. Um, it's incredibly expensive, like you said, twenty dollars to $25,000 to produce one of these dogs, dogs to this caliber, right from the breeding and choosing the parents, the health testing, the raising the puppies, evaluating the puppies, the training and care of the puppies until placement. So if anybody out there is watching, every little bit does, um, it does help. So if you'd like to sponsor or donate for ehealinghearts.com, you can go click on that button. Um, and if there's any other questions you have about uh, service dogs, or I, I'm sure that Amy and Ryan would be more than happy to answer any questions. Of course. Absolutely. Here, you guys. Yeah. That if, so if there's anybody out there that would like, I'll, I'll put you guys in touch with them as well. If there's any other parents kind of struggling with the same thing and wondering, you know, would this help and have some specific questions for you? I'll put you put you in touch. Our goal is to heal hearts and change lives through the power of a dog. Yet one more heart healer, life changer. Thank you for opening your heart and home to my Mr. Atlas. Did you know he was kind of naughty as a puppy? I'll tell you. No. Really? He was, um, he humped everything. He was Mr. Humper. <laughs> he would hump all. Is he still that way? We had we had to tell our six year old it, it's the hip wiggle dance, and so we had our six year old mimicking the hip wiggle dance. Oh, great! So, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's few and far between those. Yeah, so it's not yeah that's all. good. A but lot less. Good thing he's occupied in the family time. <laughs> yeah. he, sure, he sure knew he was a little boy early on. We had a, a lot of laughs, a lot of timeouts. We're trying to do curriculum, and Lieutenant Dad only had one thing on his mind. Come on, sir. <laughs> Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Oh, Katie's checking in. Love you, Amy and Ryan. Thank you, Jeanette Fred Norton, for such an amazing dog. Katie, thank you so much for nominating and sending in your video. I just love you guys. Thank you so much for sharing again. Have a great weekend. Of course, of <laughs> course. Anytime. Thank you. Bye. Bye.